Hello and welcome once again to Dr. Amdekar's YouTube channel. Today we will discuss and give emphasis on evaluation of joint pain and why a cautious approach needs to be there for evaluation of a joint pain. So when a patient comes with history of joint pain, we need to make sure that the pain is from the joint and not somewhere else. That means if it is an articular pain or it is, a, is it a periarticular pain. And also sometimes you will have a pain which is not originating in or around the joint but it is a referred pain. We know classically we have been taught that the left shoulder pain can be a marker for myocardial infarction and the right shoulder pain can be a marker for a gallbladder disease. Similarly, in children something like a psoas abscess or a torsion testis can come with hip joint pain. When we are looking at articular versus periarticular, it is important to note that the components which are around the joint, that means the tendon, the muscle and the skin overlying, any of this could also be the source of pain and the patient would complain of joint pain. If it is a periarticular pain, there will be a point tenderness. The pain will not be there throughout the range of the movement and the pain will be more localized and outside the joint line as we speak. Once we have decided it is a joint, then we want to make sure it is an arthritis, it is arthritis and not just arthralgia where in arthralgia you know there is going to be pain but no redness, swelling or increase in the temperature. Now patient will complain of pain at one joint but we must make sure that no other joints are involved. And so we have a clinical screening examination known as gait, arm, legs and spine. And in pediatrics, we add a P in front and we call it PGALS. It's a two minute clinical examination where we assess and screen if any other joint is involved. And if we find something, we need to do a detailed examination of that particular joint. Once we have decided what which joints are involved, the most important thing is to rule out any life threatening condition or even a joint threatening condition. One of the common condition that we, we come across is septic arthritis or infection of the hip joint. There are some red flag signs in a child or an adult with joint pain which we need to keep in mind. If there is no weight bearing, if the child has a very severe pain, if the child is not able to have any movement of the joint or if there are other systemic signs saying that the child is very sick in the form of high fever, petechiae, rashes on the body or, ex or a liver, spleen and lymph node involvement. These, becomes, uh, these become a red flag sign and you want to make sure that you assess this child urgently. Once you have ruled out the possibility of any serious disease, you want to know whether this is one single joint or more than one joints are involved. And if there are multiple joints, you want to see if there is a particular pattern of joint involvement. For example, in certain rheumatological conditions, you have more likely involvement of small joints along with a spine and midline joints. On the other hand, if the joint pattern is that is such that there is involvement of one joint which becomes better and on history you get that now the other joint is involved, you know you are probably dealing with an acute rheumatic fever. Along with this, you must make sure that whether we are dealing with a single joint involvement in a, which has a standalone problem, meaning whether the problem is just within the joint or whether this is a manifestation of some other systemic disorder. What do we mean by that? If there is a child who is suffering from say malignancy or whether the child is suffering from some autoimmune condition, in which case you will have not only the joint involvement but also other systemic involvement. Whenever somebody comes with pain in the joint, you need to make sure that the diagnosis or the differential diagnosis that you are thinking about is consistent with the age of the child. If you have a kid who is a toddler who is not yet 
he is not stopped weight bearing comes otherwise happily but limps and complains of pain you must make sure that this could be a transient synovitis of the hip joint after ruling out clinically at least possibility of septic arthritis if you have an active adolescent who comes with knee pain you may think about overuse related periarticular problem or conditions like osteoarthritis which can manifest as an acute joint pain you come across other problems in young adolescent young adults or elderly in the form of uric acid related disorders which are very very uncommon in young children if you have a person who is old you have to think about degenerative conditions or a mechanical problem which could be in the form of osteoarthritis if you feel that the child has had past history of throat pain and you are worried whether this is a post streptococcal glomerulonephritis or whether you are dealing with acute rheumatic fever details of history will help us decide whether we are dealing with this particular problem which, which of these two problems in rheumatic fever the pain will be very severe the response to treatment will be very quick and there may or may not be other cardiovascular signs on the other hand the pain may not be as severe but will take longer time to respond if you are dealing with conditions like reactive arthritis if there is a child who comes with past history of similar joint swelling and pain we must rule out any bleeding disorders in the form of hemophilia especially for boys also if you get inconsistent history improper treatment taken then non accidental injuries also needs to be taken into account as a thumb rule we like to say that non rheumatological problems will have more pain and less swelling of the joint whereas rheumatological that means autoimmune disorders will affect the joint with which may cause lot of swelling but relatively less pain on the same hand if you have a child who is otherwise very sick then please be careful to refer early very few conditions require you to manage as a pediatrician or a family physician in a situation of joint pain things like minor traumas uh, sprains aches transient synovitis of the hip joint and some reactive arthritis if you are very sure that you are only dealing with reactive arthritis should you be managing these patients otherwise early reference can not only save the joint but can also save life so please make sure you do not delay reference and do a cautious evaluation in a child who comes with a joint with joint pains finally to summarize if a patient comes with complaints of joint pain the first step would be to make sure that it is articular pain and not periarticular or referred pain do a quick pgals examination to rule out other joint involvement find if there are any red flag signs after that depending upon its acute or chronic type of joint involvement whether this is a first episode or multiple whether it is a stand alone or if there are other systemic signs you will make your further am further examination and investigation but make sure that you refer these patients early to early to either a rheumatologist or a hematologist depending upon what your primary diagnosis is thank you very much for attending this session